plumberparts.co.uk. Honest reviews and advice. Hold tight and welcome to today's plumberparts.co.uk video that's all about how to remove an airlock from a radiator. If you followed all the other steps that we've got on our channel about how to get your radiator going, and you've done your TRV, you've done balancing a system, you've altered pump speeds, you've done absolutely everything and it's still not going, you're probably going to find that it's got an airlock going to that radiator or that string of radiators if they're still not working. If you haven't done all those things, maybe you ought to give them a try first because you do need reasonably good knowledge and balls of steel to be able to actually do this particular thing. So click on the link that's appearing now, that will take you back to the radiators hub which has got loads of videos all about radiators. Anyway let's have a look at how we're going to remove this airlock now, you're going to need a hose, as I said you're going to need to have complete nerves y'all, and then we can move on and hopefully get it going. Hold tight! So then like I said we've done everything else that we can on this system and this radiator is still not getting hot. Now this could also work for say three or four rads that aren't getting hot that are on a certain leg so it's always handy to know how to do this. So the first thing we do okay whether it's a pressurized system or whether it's tank fed from the loft is we turn off the valve at each end that's the first thing we do. Next get yourself a radiator bleed key like this one. Little tip for you, if you get one like this, get yourself a file and file off the taper because they really get annoying. I put a little tag on mine so I never lose it even though I'm probably still gonna. A small Tupperware tub and a cloth maybe and just dissipate the pressure from the radiator. Right, once that's finished draining and you've dissipated all the pressure from the radiator, get your hose so it will go, a normal hose size, 15 mil hose like this one here, to half inch male thread. Some radiators will have a built in and welded in thread just for the bleed nipple. If it's got one of those, you're not gonna be able to do this. So once you've got that ready, get a little bit of PTFE, wrap some PTFE around it. After that, remove your bleed nipple, Screw this in and take your hose outside. Right, have this next to you at the ready and then unscrew this, this should come quite loose. Have maybe a towel just underneath to catch any small amount of water. As soon as this comes out, you should be able to feel it click if you press on it a bit. There you go, it's loose now and just a quick change over just like that. See that, how quick that was? Like a cat. I'm so quick you can't believe myself sometimes. If you don't think you've got a good enough connection between your hose and your spigot or nipple as we call it, get yourself a little Jubilee clip and wrap that around there and tighten that up. Before we move on to the next bit, I advise you turn all your heating system off. You go to any two port or three port valves and if you know how, latch them open. You'll find a small little arm on there, just latch that open. Also, if you've got a pressurised system, make sure that you've got a reasonable amount of pressure. In a normal house, that'd be a one to one and a half bar. If you need to know how to top that up, look at our pressurised heating systems video. And also, if you've got a tank fed system from the loft, make sure that the ball valve drops down nicely and isn't stuck up, because they can get stuck up sometimes and that won't allow any more water into the system. Once you've done that you're ready to do the next bit which is actually purging air from the flow and return side of each radiator. What we're going to do now is the flow side. You wouldn't believe how easy this is to do. All you have to do is open the radiator up. You'll hear air and water rushing out this large hole that we've now got here instead of this tiny little hole that used to be here and that will let any air out. Now sometimes if you've had the heating system running already, you can open up this valve and you'll feel hot water come through. As soon as you feel that hot water come through, I'd pretty much guarantee that you've probably removed the airlock. Now hopefully this system here hasn't got any airlocks in it, so we're probably not going to hear loads of air bubble out, but I'm going to open it up anyway and you never know what we might get. Mm, got a little bit in there. Right, that seems to have cleared now and it's quite warm as well. So we'll shut that and then we'll do the other end. So we've shut the TRV at the other end and bled that bit of air. Now we're just going to do this lock shield side. A couple of blobs of air there. That's coming through nice and warm now, that's great. 
Right, so now we've purged the flow and the return side of air, and we've got warm water coming through both of those ends. What I need you to do now is shut both of those valves. The pressure will dissipate automatically out of your hose, so you don't have to worry about that. Remove your spigot, and then put back in your air bleed key. Once you've done that, make sure that the system has either topped itself up again, so the F&E tank has stopped running, or top it up with your pressurized filling loop like we described in our pressurized heating video. Before we finish, because now you've probably successfully got your radiator going, and you're happy as Larry, there's a few things you do need to think about as to why air got in the system or in that radiator. Reason number one is there's not enough inhibitor in the system and the water is reacting with the metal inside the radiators and creating hydrogen. Reason number two is you've got an automatic air vent that is too close to the suction side of the pump and sometimes they can tend to suck air in through the air vent. Reason three is your expansion pipe is on the wrong side of the pump. Sometimes you'll be able to put your thumb over the expansion pipe and actually feel it sucking on your thumb. Reason four is the pump speed is set too high. Now it may sound crazy, but if there's not enough water being delivered to the pump impeller, i.e. there's not enough suction, then the differing pressures between the suction and the discharge side of the pump impeller are such that it causes the water to cavitate. If you want to learn about cavitation, just go online because I can't be bothered to go into it right now. But all you need to know is that it does create air and it can create air locks. So make sure that the pump speed is kind of at the right setting. I hope you found today's video helpful. I hope if we haven't covered anything you're gonna tell us and let us know as ever. Uh, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, give us love through the website at plumberparts.co.uk. If this video hasn't helped you, click on the link and go back to the Radiator Hub. You'll probably find a video there that could help you out. I'll see you guys all very soon and I hope yet again that you hold tight throughout the night. Plumberparts.co.uk, honest reviews and advice.